Hi, this is a little video showing how to work with function inverses. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this function, f of x equals 1 seventh x minus 1. And we need to do three things. First, we need to find the inverse of f of x. When we find that, we need to name it g of x. Then we need, and while we're doing that, we've got to show and explain your work as with all math. Then we have to use function composition to show that f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Then we're going to draw the graph of f of x and g of x on the same coordinate plane, and we're going to explain how the graph shows the functions are inverses of each other. Okay, let's start off with um, the first one. Find the inverse of f of x, name it g of x, and we're going to show and explain the work. So, <clears throat> the first, well, Let's just get into some nomenclature here. It says name it g of x, but remember the common way of uh, naming an inverse function would be like this. So, but since the directions is say g of x, we're going to call it g of x. Now also remember another way of thinking about our function is y equals 1 seventh x minus 1. That's a more a less sophisticated, more simplified way of looking at it. So, but for finding inverses, it's uh, important to kind of rewrite it this way. Because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to exchange x and y. So let's take a look. We have y equals 1 7th x minus 1. And it says exchange x and y. Okay, well, wherever you see a y, put an x. Wherever you see an x, you put a y. So we're going to end up with x equals 1 7th y minus 1. And now we just solve for y. So let's see, we'll add 1 to both sides, plus 1. We get x plus 1 equals 1 seventh y. We multiply by 7 by 7. Now remember, you need to multiply every term. So we'll use a distributive property here. And we get 7x plus 7 equals, well, 7 times 1 7 is just 1, and that's just the same as y. So now we have y equals 7x plus 7. This is our inverse, so it's f. It's the inverse of the f of x, but it, we've been told to call it g of x in this problem here. So we'll call it g of x plus 7. Okay, now we have that. So we have our, our original function, we have our inverse, and so the next part is use function composition to show that f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Okay, so, well, we've got the compos f <coughs> composed of g of x is equal to f of g of x. Well, this is going to be the same as, well, we know what g of x is, 7x plus 7. So what this says is in the original function, Wherever you see an x, you replace it with 7x plus 7. So it's going to be, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like uh, 1 7th times 7x plus 7, right? Uh, minus 1. Use a distributive property. 1 7th times 7 is just x, right? It's just, or just 1 times x, but it's the same as x. 1 7th times 7 is just 1 plus 1 minus 1. So we're left with x. That's it, because plus 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 times x. So, boom, that is demonstrating that they are inverses. When you compose them, um, when you use the composition of them, take the composition of them, and, and that is equal to x. So let's take a look at the other way, <coughs> g composed of f of x, g of f of x, so we know what we're going to do is g of, and we're going to take what is f of x, and we'll just put it in the parentheses here, well f of x is 1 seventh x minus 1, so now we're going to go up to the g of x, and wherever we see an x, we're going to be, we're going to replace it with 1 seventh x minus 1, so we'll go 7 times 1 seventh x minus 1 plus 7, 7 times 1 seventh is 1, that's the same as x. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7 
plus 7, 7. A negative 7 and a positive 7 and 0 is x. Voila! Look at that. So this shows mathematically that they are compositions because <coughs> the composition of f of g and g of x are both equal x and f, f and g are inverses of each other. So let's take a look at the next part is uh, 3. It says draw the graphs of f of x and the inverse of f of x, which we've named g of x, on the same coordinate, coordinate plane. Explain how your graph shows that uh, the functions are inverses of each other. Okay, let me find my pen here. So basically, you know, remember we could write this as y equals 1 7 x minus 1. Now, look, this is, we've seen this before a million times. This is a slope intercept form. So we know the slope is 1 over 7, and we, need, we know that the y um, intercept, right, is equal to 0, negative 1. Because, right, if we replace 0 for x, then we're going to get 1 7 times 0 is 0. We're going to be left with y equals negative 1. So when x equals 0, y equals negative 1. And we'll come over here to do the same thing. y equals 7x plus 7. So we know that the slope is equal. I mean, let's just do this. Just do it over 7 over 1. Because remember, the slope is the rise over the run. And then again, the y intercept, that's going to be equal to uh, x equals 0, y equals 7. So now we have point. We have a point and we have the slope. We can graph these puppies. Let's take a look at the graph. So here is, um, let's see, let me find my pen. Here is our original function. Oops, sorry, I keep on losing my pen here. Here is our original function, and this is the graph of it right here. And uh, here is the inverse function, and this is the graph of it here. Okay, well, it still doesn't tell us anything, but it just gives us the graph. This is one of the things we needed to do. Now let's take a look at the next slide. And so what it says is the functions are inverses because the graphs are reflections over the line y equals x. Um, this is y equals x right here, and they reflect both functions reflect over for each ordered pair x, y on, on one graph, the point y, x appears on the other graph such that 0, 7, right, which is, let's mark it down here, is reflected over here to 7, 0, and so on and so forth for all points on both of them that reflected over the line y equals x. That's how you can graphically tell that they are uh, inverses of each other. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.